So we're finally here doing our favorite movies of 2022. Um, I have 15 and she has five. Um, I'm going, we're going to quickly talk about our honorable mentions. We're just going to list those off. And then we will, I will get quickly go over like my 15 through number six. And then um, we will trade off and on doing our top fives. So um, my honorable mentions are On the Count of Three, 3,000 Years of Longing, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, Wakanda Forever, X, The Woman King, Barbarian, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, and Funny Pages. Okay. Mine are Bodies, 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 Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, The Menu, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, and Pearl. Alrighty. So my number 15 pick is Bones and All. This is a really well thought out comedy and not comedy romance it's a romance movie um mixed with a lot of horror elements i thought it was shot really really well and it was a really really interesting and unique story and despite my hatred of timothy chalamet i actually thought he did fine in this movie and it's a really like rewatchable um film and um it's just like despite how gross it is and how hard it is to watch sometimes i think it's a very easy watch at the same time like it, it's it's not like i don't know too much you know what i mean it was for me i cried <laughs> anyway number 14 for me so you're gonna see a lot of a24 i think on both of our lists just because they really hit it out of the park in 2022 i mean they had great movie after great movie after great movie and there's gonna be a lot of that on this list um and another A24 movie I don't know if we're seeing is Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. She had it in her honorable mentions. I think this movie was extremely fun. Uh, it was also shot really well. had a really great mystery. And the Gen Z humor didn't feel forced. It didn't feel disingenuous. It felt like really authentic and like someone who's actually been around people our age. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Yeah. Number 13 for me is The Northman. Uh, this was just, like, an awesome movie. Robert Eggers is a great director. Um, not a lot needs to be said about it. It was just a really awesome and well-made movie. Uh, number 12 is Cha-Cha Real Smooth. This was a really emotional film. Um, really endearing and really feel-good. Like, it, it, this is a movie that you walk out of in a really good mood. So that's there. And then my number 11 is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Just outside of my top 10. I love this movie a lot more than other people did. A lot of people thought it was really corny and um, didn't have a lot of substance to it. I felt like it was Marvel's most creative and um, kind of uh, thematically rich movies they've had in a really long time. I loved what they did with Wanda's character. I thought Sam Raimi's influence was really great. I thought the shocking moments really hit hard. Um, this movie, to me, uh, was probably the most underappreciated movie of 2022. All right. I underappreciate it. Yeah, the camera doesn't like it very much. Um, and then my number, rounding out the top 10, I have at number 10, Babylon. This movie would be a lot higher if it weren't for the last five minutes. Uh, I was really engaged with it and really loving it for the most part. Um, I thought the performances were all fantastic. The soundtrack was great. The visuals are great. It's basically Damien Chazelle flexing his strengths as a filmmaker through the entire runtime. And then he gets to the last, like, ten minute where this weird montage happens, and it really feels out of place and really bogs this movie. Because this movie could have been in my top three if, if it wasn't for that. Uh, but the rest of the movie works so well for me and is easily, like, a ten out of ten. And then the last one box it down to like an eight. Uh, and then number nine, I have Knives Out, Glass Onion. This is just another really well-made and well-written movie through and through. I thought the mystery was just as intriguing as the first one. The performances were just as great. I really like how the movie turns itself on its head and you kind of are told the same movie, but uh, at a completely different angle. It maybe isn't as like flawless as the first Knives Out is. There are a little bumps, bumps in the road throughout, but I'm not here to really criticize these movies this was easily um the most fun i had with the movie all year and uh it had one of the best scripts of 2022 and then at number eight i have pearl another one of her honorable mentions i think this exceeded the highs of x and i felt like um getting this kind of movie is really cool and just how unhinged it was and how well shot it was and how um 
much of an elevated uh, experience it was than X, and I really think it is Ty West's best movie to date. Um, and then at number seven, I have The Fablemans. This is where we're getting into really, really, really great stuff. Um, I absolutely loved The Fablemans. I thought it was uh, some of Steven Spielberg's best work, and he really put himself into this movie. He really um, put his entire st like this is it has th his thumbprint from beginning to end. It's a really inspiring movie. It's a really heartwarming movie. It's kind of heartbreaking at times, and um, it's almost so cheesy that it is kind of brilliant. So, no, I didn't think it was cheesy. I liked it. I love it. And then All Quiet on the Western Front was a really sobering movie, a really hard to watch movie, and a very poign poignant. Is that how you pronounce that word? Yeah. Yeah. Poignant um, anti war film and just showing how kind of pointless war is and how um, it, I don't know, it has no real winners and how horrifying it is. I think it really elevates the war is hell genre past the doldrums and did something really creative so yeah that is my 15 through 6 and then we're going to start with her number 5 and then go to my number 5 okay. Okay. you mean leave me alone? no <laughs> go ahead. Okay. my number 5 is don't worry darling um I really 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 like Florence Pugh um, the only thing is that I don't like Harry Styles, and he did a really, really bad job. But Florence Pugh did really good, so, and it was really pretty and and a cool concept. It was good. Um, my number five is The Banshees of Inisherin. Um, this movie was not even in my top ten a couple weeks ago. Um, I liked it a lot. Actually, I loved it, but um, I didn't. I thought the first act was a little too slow. And then I thought about it more, and I kept thinking about the movie, and I realized how much I ended up loving this thing just because of the deep themes. The script is so good, and the movie is so funny. Uh, I, the central two performances and uh, the performance, I don't remember her name, but she was the sister, Colin Farrell's sister. She was phenomenal. Um, I just think it's a really well-told story, and... Um, the more you think about the Banshees of Inisherin, the better it gets. So yeah, that's our number five. My number four is Bones and All. Um, it was also really pretty, and um, I liked the girl, the main, the girl who was the main character. I didn't like Timothy Chalamet, but I feel like his character is a little bit more removed than like his. Kind of like stupidness I don't know but I liked it it was really nice and I want to watch it again my number four is we're all going to the world's fair um, this movie I know like it doesn't work for mo for a lot of people like I know a lot of people really felt it found it really boring um, but I found it to be really disturbing and uh, one I loved the Alex G score I thought that um, was a really nice touch um, I found it to be really creepy and unsettling. I think that this is a kind of movie that a lot of people can relate to, like going down a rabbit hole on the internet and kind of, um, like losing yourself to a weird phenomenon. And I think this movie betr betrays that side of the internet better than any other movie I've ever seen. And I just thought, uh, that it, I don't know, was a very disturbing and, um, well thought out movie. Number four. And uh, we both have the same top three, like the exact same top three. So um, we're oh, going to do them that. together. So I what's didn't our know that. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Uh-huh. What's our number three, Cameron? We'll do one, two, three. One, one two. No. Nope, okay. You want to start? It was really scary. Um, and made me paranoid after, but it was really fun and really cool, and I've never seen a movie like that before. What about you? Um, one, I thought the main performances from all of the actors yes. were phenomenal. Yes, Kiki Palmer. Yeah, and she Daniel. She's so good. She's so silly. Daniel, I don't, I can't say his last name. I don't remember it. 
or know how to pronounce it, but he, the guy from Get Out, he is phenomenal in this movie. So is Kiki Palmer. Um, She's so pretty. I feel like their relationship in this movie, um, like the, the brother sister dynamic, was portrayed so well. I thought the visuals in this movie were some of the best I've ever seen. I think that uh, like the nighttime scenes and the, the scene with Steven Young's character, Cowboy, when they all get sucked up into the end to Jean Jacket, was horrifying. Uh, the monkey scenes are, are really, oh. really, really, really well made. I forgot about um, and I thought I feel like the, like the central themes and the script and how um, much this movie th- makes you think, but also how much it's not really a horror movie and it's more of a tribute to stuff like Jaws and like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I thought it was really, really well done and kind of subverts your expectations going into it. Um, the scenes that are really tenseful. Are, like have you at the edge of your seat it's funny um it's visually one of my favorite movies visually i've ever seen and i think jordan peele really can do no wrong at this point uh he's made three really phenomenal movies and this might just be his best yes ever lovely mm-hmm. what's our number two the batman Ooh. that was so good it was, we watched it two times. Three times. Three times. Yeah. yeah. And it's still so good every time. Mm-hmm. I don't like to rewatch movies because then I don't like them anymore. Um, and they just get old very fast. Like, I watch it and I'm done. But The Batman we watched three times and I would watch it again. Because it's so fun and thrilling and cool and, like, a lot happens. And you don't even feel, like, the length of all of it. Yeah. Um, anything else? Okay. Um, for me, as a huge, go ahead. Sorry. We just got the the Batmobile Lego set and we made it. We did with the penguin and the Batman. Comes with the penguin and the Batman yeah. and the car shoots things and the penguin's gun shoots things. Anyway, y'all gotta get on that. Lincoln's bio. No, it's not. Um, we we do not have a Lego sponsorship. Okay. Wish we did. Uh, uh, money. How did you uh, feel about the Batman? Okay, um, as a huge Batman fan, uh, I, I easily think this is the best film adaptation of Batman. I think it's the best movie overall as a Batman movie. Um, I think that... Are I, you a big Batman? No. Big fat guy? Um, yes, yes I am. Robert Pattinson is so good in this movie. He He's did really good. easily my favorite portrayal of Batman, I think, is... Uh, really embodies everything about the comic book character. I think that, um, what's her name, Zoe Kravitz was... She's so pretty. It was incredible as Catwoman and also embodied everything about... Like, I feel like this movie has the essence of Batman down to a T, including the Riddler, including um, Jeffrey Wright as Officer... Is it Gordon? Yeah, that's his name, right? Um, Paul Dan was a Riddler. It, It All of it fits so well together, and you really don't feel the length at all. I love the detective stuff. I love the visuals. I think Gotham City feels the most alive in this movie out of any of the other Batman movies. Um, and it is just a perfect action movie. Like, to me, this is the perfect way to make a comic book movie and is probably my favorite comic book movie made to uh, up until now. Anything else? It's really good. I'm watching the movie and I have anger. Cameron, what's our number one? Everything, ever, all at once. Yes. Um, it's, like, I'm not coming as a surprise, I think, to anybody that our number one is Everything, Ever, All at Once. Um, we saw this movie last April, not really knowing what to expect, not, um... Hey, it looked really cool. Yeah. I was excited. I was excited for it, but I didn't expect that. Like, I didn't expect mm-hmm. one of the, one of my favorite movies of all time, you know? Like, I didn't, I didn't expect it to be that great. Um, and like you, you guys know that it's that great at this point. It won so many Oscars. So many people have sung its praise to this point where there are idiots that are like, "Oh, it's overrated. Oh, it, it's not that good." It's just a, uh, uh, where I think some people can't be pleased and they think everything is overrated. That's but everything feel. everywhere all once is not overrated. But no, I think it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's properly rated. Yeah. Underrated, if anything. Um, from a visual standpoint, from it being one of the most original and creative movies I've seen, um, to the script, which is, I don't, I don't even, 
I can't even comprehend how they began to even start the writing process on this. Um, I think the Daniels deserve so much praise, even more than they've gotten for this thing. All of the performances, uh, it's, it's Kei Hu Kwan, who plays Waymond. Um, one of the best performances in a movie I've ever seen, and a, a, a movie character that really hit home emotionally, especially, you know, the one scene. Yeah. Yeah, that scene, wow. Um, All the scenes. Yeah, and the actions, it just, it has literally everything for anyone. I think anybody can, if, who has an open mind and isn't just, oh, it's weird, turn it off. Uh, if you can open your mind and just sit down with this movie, I think anybody can find stuff to appreciate it. Even if you don't love it as much as me and Cam do, I think um, anybody can appreciate at least something in this movie. Yes. Go ahead. That's all. It was just really, really good and overwhelming, but not in a way where it's like, oh my god, this is too much. It's scary. Like, not scary or overwhelming or stressful. It was just like... A lot. Yeah. A lot of emotion. It's a lot to process, but it really sticks with you in that way of just, like, thinking about it and sitting on what you just experienced. And, um, I feel like, especially, I'm thinking about the rock scene right now and how awesome it is that they got you to be emotionally invested in two boulders and have, and, like, pull off a scene like that. Mm-hmm. And like just like the weirdly specific stuff that happens, where you just kind of accept it, because I feel like in other movies you're like, "What is that?" Like that that that's that seems like it's reaching, it's too cartoony. But with this movie, like I feel like you just accept it, and it's it's yeah. a part of the, the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's one of the best movies I've ever seen, and I think will go down as a classic. Yeah, I think everybody should watch it. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Thank you guys so much for watching, Cameron. Thank you for being on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Of course, always, always, always. Taking the time. Yeah. No, but it's not because it's not unwatchable. Okay. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you so much for having me, Jimmy. And then he starts dying laughing. Yeah, the, the Jimmy Fallon, not Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel is the annoying one. That uh, I can't. I can't really tell the difference. Do they even look different? Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel's a little older. He's got a beard. That's like their own, the only difference between the two. Jimmy Fallon's younger. Anyway. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I, know, I, know, I know. But I understand because like, I get them confused constantly. They look the same in yeah. your head. Because they are uh, very similar. Anyway. Um, Which one does SNL? Neither. Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon has done SNL in the past. I thought that SNL was on the Jimmy Fallon show. What is SNL on? NBC. It's its own thing. It's its own show. Is it actually? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank um, you. See you guys in the next video. Bye.